Now we start dealing with how we deal with others. Do we play good in the sandbox? Amen? Praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number 7. And starting with verse number 1. I just want to kind of give a, a just a little starting point of this. And uh, at verse number 1. If we could just read that together, and, and I'm going to put a couple of extra words in there. This is from the Amplified uh, Version of the Bible. And all that is is the King James Version, and they amplify certain, certain words to bring them out. It's talking about judging others. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteousness or superiority as though assuming the office of a judge so that you will not be judged unfairly. Think of that just for a minute. For us not to judge others. How many knows today it is hard not to judge people? Amen? Because that's our natural reaction. But let's get down to the, to the depth of what causes us to judge somebody. And this is something that I think that whenever we've been dealing with the, with the message on labels, this is something that the Lord also dealt with my heart about our church. And it was talking about um, in the Bible where it talks about that there's many members to the church, but they're all one body. And that sometimes one member doesn't feel as eloquent as the other. As a matter of fact, maybe the foot says that um, it is not arrayed in jury like the ear is. Or maybe the nose or something about the face. Well, it's closer to the, to the head or the brain, so it must be more important. So the Bible goes on to tell us that there's no unimportant parts in the kingdom of God and it doesn't matter if you're a little toe or if you're an eyeball you're important in the kingdom of God and without your assistance in that body it's going to be lacking something amen praise God so the reason I wanted to bring that that up is because this the reason our church struggles so much is because we as a people, we have not understood that whenever we look down on somebody and their situation, we are judging them. Amen? And that will cause people to struggle. It will cause a church to struggle because we look down on somebody for whatever reason that may be. But whenever we come into the house of God, God sees us all as the same. And he said, I don't prefer anyone in there more than the other of those that belong to me that are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Now think of that. That's just one part of judging. It's just that we get in a position to where we feel like that we have elevated above that person's life and we are capable of judging correctly what's happening and what they need to do. <laughs> Amen? You ever heard the phrase, you better walk a mile in somebody's shoe before you start spouting off your mouth about what they're suffering with. <laughs> Amen. It's easy for us to get into a position to where we want to judge somebody else. Amen. Whether it be social, sociologically, whether it be economically, but we get in a position where we feel like we're over somebody. Maybe it's it's um, in theology, maybe it's in uh, mentality, whatever that is that we feel like we're superior, and then we start to judge. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that whenever we do that, we do not judge with mercy and grace. Amen? And then it says, if we're not careful, then God's going to turn around and judge us with that same attitude. Woo! Amen. Because how many knows this? Usually when we judge somebody, it's when we want to pull them down a few notches. Amen. I like the way you are with me tonight. I, this is getting better than I thought it was. Amen. Praise God. You ever get to a place that people ain't saying much amen, that's where you need, need to stay for a little bit. Do not judge and criticize 
or condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as though assuming the office of a judge so that you will not be judged unfairly. For just as you hypocritically judge others when we are sinful or unrepentant, so we will be judged in accordance with our standard of measure and used to pass out judgment. And judgment will be measured to us according to what we judge them with. Now, I'm going to tell you something, friend. When I get to heaven, I want to be judged with mercy. Amen. I, I don't want to be, and, and let's just, I don't want to be a hard person on this earth. Can I tell you this? What, what it happens when we become judgmental of others? We become hard. We're unmoved. We lose our compassion for others. We lose our passion for the Lord. We lose the fire. We lose the desire when we begin to judge others. But if we're not careful as a person and as a society, when we start to do that, then every time the Lord wants to do something in us, He's going to have to bring us to that place that we learn how to treat others without judging them. Amen? Let's go on just a little bit further. Now this gets a little bit interesting here as well. Why do you look, verse number 3, why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye but do not notice and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your eye? Think of that. We see a speck in somebody else's life. In other words, something small in their life. When we're walking around and one one commentary said you're walking around with a telephone pole sticking out at your eyeball. And you're saying, hold on, I got a, I got a shadow here. <laughs> hold on just a minute, I got a little bit of shadow here. <laughs> oh, there's that speck. Yeah, I knew you need to take care of that. Yep, right, right there. Right though, that isn't speck. That's where the BB hit. <laughs> I'm just picking at you, brother. I love you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> praise the Lord, but we got that beam we can't see right. <laughs> Amen. How many knows the shadow alone will be a trouble? But that's what we do. Man, we're over here trying to tell everybody else what they're supposed to be doing. Let me tell you, that's what's hard whenever you're a pastor because let me tell you something, whenever you step behind the pulpit, you're sitting there and the first thing I always want to say is, Lord, I can't tell nobody what to do because I ain't been doing the best in the world at times. But there comes a time that you stand behind the pulpit and you say, I just got to speak for the Lord. And this is where the line is. And whether you, you're you on it or I'm on it, whether we're on the right side or on the wrong side, that's where the line is and we're going to be judged accordingly. Amen? Amen? So be careful. Be careful because it's easy. And once again, as I said, we, you know, we, we also, we have the ability. The thing about it is this. It doesn't matter if there's a speck in our eye and it doesn't matter if there's a beam in, in, in our eye as well. We still need God to take care of it. Because if, if I'm reading this thing right according to God's Word, whether it's a speck or a beam, it's wrong. Amen? It's sin. It's sin. So if we get to the point where we are not recognizing and we're not judging in accordingly, then we will not even recognize how to walk without walking in sin. So be careful. Be careful how that we allow ourselves to be pulled into the enemy's games because here's the thing. If we want to look at anybody tonight, anybody and say, if I want to judge my life accordingly, the only one that we have the right to put our life next to is Christ Jesus. Amen? Because if we want to elevate ourselves, we'll find somebody that we're living above. Maybe we feel like, and now I'm talking about spiritually speaking. Amen? They, you know, they don't, you know, they're, they're new to the church. They're not praying as much as I am. So they're not quite to the level that we are. So we begin to be putting them in that position that they're spiritually below us. Amen? Do you understand what I'm trying to accomplish tonight? That we do these things and it affects our life 
And it's simple. The Lord told us to treat others the way that we would like for them to treat us. Isn't that the golden rule? Isn't that the golden rule? To do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. And listen, folks, the thing that happens is the enemy, what he does is he brings a grenade in and he throws it away and it goes in the midst of people and it explodes. And instead of looking at the true culprit that just tried to blow up everything that God or, or whatever happens in our family or what happened in our life, all of a sudden what was meant for that, all of a sudden the Lord helps us to get over it. Amen. I can't do anything about anybody except for myself. And Lord, I can't worry about the speck in other people's eyes until, Lord, I get my life to where it needs to be with you. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And can I tell you this? It helps us if whenever we recognize that we are dealing with people's lives, this is heaven and hell we're dealing with. Amen. This this is this is the difference of people making it or not. And I'm thinking about this, you know, even even in the midst of church and thinking back over in my life, there's some things that that has happened to me that that you know, I'm glad the Lord didn't shine a light on. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord from it that that he did but whatever the case may be, whenever the Lord shines into our life, we just have to be ready to, to adapt to whatever the Lord is trying to teach us or help us to understand. Amen? Praise God. So let's go a, a little bit further. And listen, the biggest thing is that, Lord, I need your forgiveness. I need your forgiveness. I need your help. I need uh, your mercy in my behalf because there's things in our life Every one of us, we're trying to walk this thing called Christianity. We're trying to walk according to God's Word. But how many knows this road sometimes gets hard? Amen? Amen. Let me ask you this question. Along the difficult places, if we recognize that it's the difficult, the difficult places, we'll also recognize that that's where God really picks us up and takes care of us and carries us through the situation. Amen? Praise God. That's where God can measure and move our life forward. Let's go a little bit further. Or how can you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye, you hypocrite, play actor, pretending. Okay, here's where we get to. If we do anything for God and we are being a judgmental person, then we are play acting. Somebody say amen. I said that we can become somebody that goes through the motions of going to church and, and serving the Lord and, and doing what we know that we're supposed to be, but whenever we become judge of the of, of the, <laughs> judge over others then we get to a position in our life where that the Lord, when we offer up our praise and thanksgiving, that God cannot be touched by our prayers until we get into a position of resolution or restitution. Amen? Get to a place. Let me tell you, we're living in the last days and I don't care what you have anything with anybody. I don't care if it's a 50 years ago or it's 10 years. Get things right because Jesus is coming soon and whenever He comes back, the pretenders are not going. Amen? I don't know where the, where the minister got it, but he, he said it like this. He said, we got to be contenders and not pretenders. We're contending for the faith, folks. And what good is it if we come to church? What good is it if we're going to get to a position to where we begin to look down or to look at others in a way that we think that we're better than they are? Let me give you another example like this. I went to a church where if you attended that church, 
Everybody in, the, in that church thought you were the most favorable person in the world. But everybody in the community thought they were a cult. And the reason why was because that we had gotten so much into going through the motions of the outward man that we had forgotten the repentance of the inward man. Amen. Let me tell you, I don't care what's, what's happening around our life. It's time to make restitution. It's time to get restored. Whatever we need to do because Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. But He's not coming back for us if we have not put everything under the blood. And we have not put on that white garment and prepared ourselves to be the bride as the bridegroom is about to come. Amen. It's that close, folks. Do we know even a scripture in the Bible that we were talking with somebody just the other day about the weather? It's been insane. We go to bed at night. It's 29 degrees. We get up in the morning. It's freezing cold. All of a sudden, by noontime, it's 60, 70 degrees. All of a sudden, it, it fluctuates so much. And it brought back to my remembrance that said there's coming a a day in the last days of where men would not be able to tell the seasons that we're in. I'm not talking about just the seasons for a couple of days. I'm talking about from day to day. We're seeing earthquakes in places we've never seen. We're seeing things set up like never before for the Lord to come back. I can tell you this. You know, there's a there's a uh, a lot of circumstances and situations that's in the Word of God that God's working on right now and He's moving in. But that's what He has been beating upon my heart is to make sure that everything that happens in our life, that we get in a position of where we are a child of God. That we're not that wavered servant that's done gone the wayside. We are a child of God and we want everything if there's something in my life, if there's something in your life tonight, we need to get it right with God. Put it under the blood. It's not worth it. It's not right, uh, worth getting to a position where we get into a position where we judge and we try to put others underneath us. Amen? Praise God. We're all equal in the eyes of God. And do you know what that means? The same way that we can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. The same way that God can use me or use Brother Wesley or use Brother Ricky is the same way He can use anybody in this building is whenever that we believe in God and we don't have to just have one person that is a spokesperson for God or one person that God moves through. Let me tell you something. He works and moves through all of us and we've got to be in tune with the Lord. Brother Ricky said it uh, this past Sunday. We were talking about Sister Rhonda not reading that Scripture. And whenever she read the Scripture, she knew that morning that she was supposed to read that Scripture, but she got into the position of that she was about to read it, and she said, I really don't want to read it. And she made the decision that she was not going to read it. But as he said, when she read the Scripture, something began to happen in this building. And me and him kind of talked about it after, afterwards. Is, Why would you wait so late? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't have to come through the pastor. It can come through all of us. But if we're not where we need to be with God and we let that moment pass, all of a sudden we miss the ministry that God has meant for us. Let me tell you something, friend. Wouldn't you much rather, and I'm just saying this in general, wouldn't we much rather be a minister of the gospel that goes forth and prays for people and goes forth and does the things that God has asked us to do? Let me tell you something. There is a such thing as being a judge in this world. It is a man or a woman that sits on a, uh, on a bench and they have to judge people's lives. They have to judge things that is going on. And they have to do what they have to do. But you know what? One day they'll have to give an account before God as being a judge on this earth. That's what the Bible says. The way they treat, it's, it's not a free pass. See, everybody thinks that the judge is a free pass. But knowing the Bible, it said they'll have to stand before God the way they judge people. Whether they judge with compassion or whether they judge with just the law. How many knows this? 
The law can't do nothing but just point out your sin and just tell you you're wrong. That's all the law can do. You're a sinner. That's the law. But the grace of God, it comes in and says, look, this is the law that's been broken. But here is the grace and the mercy that God has given in His only Son that brings redemption or brings that place. Let me tell you something, friend. There's nothing ever any worse in this lifetime that you'll ever have happen to you than to have where you're sitting before somebody else and they have to judge you. That's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> I love you, brother. It is. Let me tell you something. That's the worst feeling in the world and you sitting there. Let me tell you something, friend. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know what? He's done what he was supposed, supposed to do and he's paid his debt. And you know what? In God's eyes, he's clean. Amen? And it better not be anybody in this church that ever brings that up as anything in his life to say, look what happened. You do that, you'll have a fight on your hands, folks. Amen? Because that's how we that's how we got to take the things that God is placing upon our heart. We got to recognize this thing stretches from glory to glory, not just from from uh, law book to law book. It's the heart that God is asking where is today. You see, because this is the last thing that I just like to say tonight. The heart is this. If I've been serving the Lord and I get into His Word and I'm reading it and I get on my knees and I've been fasting and I've been praying, Lord, use me for Your glory. Use me for Your honor and get my life and get my heart in a position of where God can speak to me. Amen? That's me. That's the way that I know how to do everything that we've ever done as a church. It's just to get in a position to where we hear God's voice again. Sometimes we're so busy trying to get things going back again that we're not listening to see if God is speaking to our heart or speaking in our spiritual ear to speak to our heart and say, look, slow down just a little bit. We can't do anything about this. And each one of you is fixing, we can't do anything about this until we allow God to do something with this. Amen. I'm talking about all of us. I'm, I'm not just talking about the pastor. I'm talking about all of us. We can't do nothing with this. And listen, this is where a heartbeat is. We see all those that are going through struggling and all those that are sick and all those that are, that are having difficulties in their life and getting to a position of where we just get to a point. I wonder to myself, there's been so many that's come through this church. Sometimes we need to get it, maybe once a year we need to get in the middle of the church and say, look, is there anybody in here that you can't shake their hand or hug their neck? You need to go hug their neck or shake their hand right now. <laughs> Amen? Because if something's in a position of where I can't speak to one of the body parts of Christ, then we're going to be hobbling <laughs> because the body parts <laughs> are not connected. Amen. Let me tell you, good, bad, or ugly, this is what we got. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes in laws, sometimes outlaws, but this is what we got. We got to say, Lord, here we are. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're an outlaw, an in law, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, then you're a part of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're a part of the kingdom of God. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet today. But the last thing I want you to remember is whenever we have compassion on others, then we're concerned about their needs. Then we're concerned about their struggle. Then we're concerned about their life. And most important, then we're concerned about their heart and their salvation and where eternity will be. Listen, folks, to have compassion of the Lord today. We need to share with one another and be that loving, kind person 
that brings the word forth. And if God does give us a word to give to our brothers, our sisters, not to do it in a way that makes them feel anything less than what God is speaking to them through us in a position of where God is moving. Hallelujah. Lord, don't ever withdraw your Holy Spirit from this church. Lord, don't withdraw your Holy Spirit from our life. But God, get us in a position, Lord, of where we have love and compassion, God. And whenever we have that love and that compassion, Lord, it does not push us to judge. It pushes us to minister, Lord. It pushes us to bring ministry forward, God. We ask you right now, Lord, to touch our life. And draw us closer to you, Lord. Lord, that we are in the last days, God. And that you are fulfilling the word of God even as we speak today. And Lord, we ask you right now to touch our heart. And Lord, if there's anything in our life that's not pleasing unto you, Lord, to, Lord, to wash us in your blood. And Lord, to cast it as far as the east is from the west today. Never to be remembered anymore. But God, those things in our life that's not going to benefit us. Those things in our life that are self-righteous and not righteous, Lord. Let us lay it upon the altar today. And let us place it before your throne room. God, we don't want to be self-righteous. We don't want to think of ourselves as any high, more highly than what we should or what we ought to today. We are the children of God and we thank you for that, Lord. For bringing, into the, bringing us into that place. But Lord, we also know that we were once sinners that now is saved by grace. That's saved by your mercy. And Lord, help me to look at others and see the love that you had with your eyes looking into my heart. Let me look into their heart. And I ask you, Lord, give me mercy and give me grace to look upon people's lives. And not only that, God, but to recognize, Lord, that you are desiring to be their heavenly Father. Lord, help us to be a good, a good soldier. Help us to be a good child of God tonight. Help us to be that vessel that you've called us to be. That vessel of honor, Lord. Help us to watch what we say and watch where we go and watch what we allow our hands to touch and what we allow our, our life to do, God. But get us in a position, Lord, that we recognize, Lord Jesus, that you're coming soon, Lord. And Lord, I just want to be one thing. And that is right with you. I want to be right with you, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, as we're about to pray, God, Lord, to begin to touch our heart, Lord. If we need to be convicted of something, God, allow the Holy Spirit to convict us tonight. But Lord, don't let us leave this place without putting everything under the blood today. And Lord, don't let us leave out of, out of this building without accepting, Lord Jesus, the promises that you have given to us, Lord. And Lord Jesus, to have the victory today that we can get up from where we are and we can stand up believing your word is yea and amen, God. And that you're going to walk with us everywhere we go, God. You're going to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name.